Okay, so now it's time to get our hands dirty. We're, 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 we're complete with the uh, sort of theoretical part. Now it's time to open up your laptops and open up the links. Now, um, that Q, this is a new QR code. This will take you directly to the, um, the one that's linked in number three, the Let's Build Together um, link. So check out um, the, the repo name should be Hedera Tokens CYOA Tutorial um, under GitHub. And I believe that's the end of it. So I'm going to go right over here. So just, uh, just a show of hands. Does anyone have any questions after the slide deck? Um, or would you like me to continue with the hands-on portion? All good? All right. So... Um, and, and who needs more time to scan the QR code and open this in their browser? All good? All right. So once, once we're inside, um, GitHub, sorry, I should say, uh, once we're inside this repo on GitHub, right? Just scroll down a bit and you will see Hedera tokens CYOA, right? And then you'll see this big green button called open in Gitpod. Um, and today I'm just going to walk through it, but don't worry. This has been also recorded. You can check out the uh, the pre-recorded videos also inside the README. There's four of them. Oh, I should say five of them, and um, and you can and you can follow along your own pace, pause, etc. But um, if if you would like to do it live, you know, um, please please follow along. So I'd encourage you to open this in a new tab. Oops. Hang on. Yep. So open this in a new tab, and then that will open up Gitpod over here. Let me just make that a bit smaller. All right, so I'll full screen Gitpod. And um, if this is your first time ever using Gitpod, you will see uh, something else. You will see a screen saying um, sign in with GitHub. And if you see that, uh, just authorize it and accept the permissions. Now, once this is done, right, you'll get into a screen that looks like VS Code, except that you'll notice that it's not an application. Um, it's actually VS Code inside of a browser. So this is actually a Docker instance run by Gitpod, and VS Code is running inside of it, as well as any code that you want to run. Now, what you'll see right away is a terminal, and inside of the terminal, you'll see a script with some prompts. The prompts are in purple with this uh, like circle emoji, right? And what this is doing is the .env file, it's initializing it for you. So this is, um, just saves you some time, right? So it says, enter a bit 39 seed phrase, um, just hit enter to accept the default, it'll generate a new one for you. Um, and then how many accounts do you want? The default is three, just hit enter again. JSON RPC endpoint, again, just accept the default. And then, now this part, um, you have to select an operator account private key. And if you just hit enter, it'll use the first account that you've generated. So that's pretty easy. Now, this chair, sorry. okay, cool. Right, and then right at the bottom. Now this, this time you actually have to do something, right? So select the EVM address, which starts with 0x and copy that. Then hold down command or control, depending on your operating system, and click on the hyperlink for faucet.hadera.com. Then press open, and that'll open a new tab. So now you're in the Hedera faucet. If, uh, if you're familiar with those, it just gives you testnet um, cryptocurrency. So this will give you testnet hbar. So under wallet address, you paste the EVM address that was generated earlier on, 0x something. Then press the receive 100 testnet hbar and then press confirm transaction. Oh, uh, I think we were going too fast. Uh, going a bit too fast? I'm so sorry, I missed like all the friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So, I the chair though, so now I can see it. Um, okay, so uh, if, if you need any assistance, um, so Freddie and Mike are in the back, just raise your hands and they'll come to your desk and get you sorted. So I'll just run through that last part really quick. So which, with each of these prompts, right simply hit enter to accept the default once you get to the last one where you see this url called faucet.hadera.com that's when you have to do something so you'll see please ensure that you have funded 0x address copy that 
and then hold down command or control on your laptop and click on the URL that will bring you to the faucet which looks like this and then you operate the faucet by pasting your EVM address then press the receive button and then you should uh, complete a capture as well and then you'll get a uh, you should get um, HBAR successfully sent yeah alright so I see does anyone else um, have you got this far all good yeah so I'll just wait for one more over there so we, we got stuck a few times and now everyone has uh, has has completed so I'm just gonna do this one last time right just just uh, just very quickly um, so that you know so that um, if you were stuck earlier on you know it's super clear so opening up in git pod right and then you'll see the instance spinning up so what this is is a uh, docker instance and the docker instance is running inside of your browser rendering a vs code implementation and you'll see the usual stuff like a column on the left with all the files this is the code area and this is the terminal um, what is happening what the first thing that needs to happen is this dot n file with all of these fields being empty and then inside of the terminal a script automatically runs for you that helps you to initialize this right so there are a few prompts and for most of them you can just accept the default so when it says enter a bit 39 seed phrase simply hit enter for default when it says enter a number of accounts um, the default is three so just hit enter rpc euro also hit enter to accept the default um, and it starts running that over in this terminal over here um, in the background um, and then in the script um, operator account private key if you hit enter then it'll just use uh, one of the accounts the first account that you've generated and then this one do not hit enter immediately what you have to do is copy this URL uh, sorry this EVM address that starts with 0x along the lines please ensure that you have funded 0x something so copy that address and then hold down command or control and click on the URL and the dialog press the open button and then that will take you to faucet.hydera.com and then inside of here it says enter wallet address paste the address that you just copied just double check that it's 0x something and not you know uh, a different uh, thing that you copied now press um, receive one uh, receive testnet hbar and then you'll get a dialog that asks you to pass a capture just click on that and then press confirm transaction and then within a second or two you should see uh, 100 hbar successfully sent so once you see this um, that's good it means that your account has been funded then go back to the previous tab that you are at the dot n file and inside of the dot n file uh, sorry inside of gitpod you should still see the same dot n file and underneath it go back to the terminal click inside the terminal right at the bottom um, so that it has uh, focus and then hit enter and then it basically checks that the funding has actually occurred and then um, it'll say okay I've generated all of these accounts and this is my proposed .n file um, do you wish to overwrite it so it wants to overwrite this one so just type Y and then press enter and then you can see that it has initialized the .n file already right um, if you see a file that looks like this then you're all good we're ready to go and start with the task yeah so um, just show of hands for those who are following along everyone has gotten to this stage yeah awesome we, we got there all right um, you also see a pop-up pop here saying service available on port 7546 that means that your RPC relay is running right you can just close that but and you don't need to do this you'll notice that in the terminal there are actually three of them running so RPC relay is actually running a JSON RPC endpoint for you within this Docker instance. Um, just FYI, you don't actually need to care about that. Now, now, now let's start with a with tokens, right? So there are three different uh, sub tutorials in here, uh, three different ways to do tokens, as promised in the title of this workshop, and we'll go through each one of them one at a time. So um, let's start with the HTS token. Right, so this is a way, a different way to do tokens than you may have seen on any other blockchain because it doesn't involve smart contracts. So if you open up token HTS, 
this folder over here in the navigation and then open up script token HDS. You'll see a file that looks like this. And what I'd like to highlight here is that if you look at the dependencies that are being imported, you will notice that none of them have anything to do with Ethereum. You don't see Ethos.js, you don't see Web3.js, you don't see VM, etc. Right? You just see imports from the Hashgraph SDK. Right? Um, and this is written in JavaScript. It's also available in Java and Go, but today we'll be doing it in JavaScript. Right? Okay, so now let's run the script, and the script sort of acts as a tutorial to itself. CD um, in the terminal, go uh, click inside the terminal and type CD token dash hts and so that brings you inside the same folder as here then you need, just need to type dot slash followed by the file name which is script token dash hts dot js and or you can just type script and hit tab and it'll auto complete then you hit enter and it'll run this script now um in this script you'll see um all these lines with purple right configuring new hts token and underneath it, you'll see a URL, a file URL, I should mention. If you hold down command and click, that will just jump you to the line which is about to execute, right? So this uh, logger allows you to jump directly to it. So what's happening now is configuring a new HTS token. And you can see this is from the Hedera SDK, token create transaction. Now you'll notice zero solidity involved here, right? We're just setting the properties. Um, as a chained method inside of this um, JavaScript API. And then at the end of it, um, we're going to submit this transaction to the network. Now, this uses H APIs using the Hedera SDK. No Solidity, no JSON RPC. This is just Hedera's own thing, right? Now, I'll hit Enter, and then that will construct this token create transaction. And then over here is going to sign um, and then submit the transaction and get its receipt. So this part was is quite similar to you know what you may be used to in Ethos.js or VM. And so you can see here that um, we've got a token that has been created, and you can see it on Hashcan, which is the equivalent of Etherscan. Just hit, uh, hold down Command and click, then press Open, and you'll open up this URL on Hashcan, and you can see, okay, I've got a fungible token, and I've got all the properties that I've configured for it, right? All the properties that you saw um, in the script, they're all here, right? And I've got um, 1 million units of the tokens with two decimal places, so that's 10,000 tokens, right? And all the balance has been transferred to the one account that I own, um, to, to the account that I created with. Now, um, HTS has this concept of token association, so in EVM, you can transfer tokens to anybody, even if they don't know about it or, or do not want it. Um, but in Hedera, you have to um, give it permission for you to, to send tokens to it. That's the, that's the way it works. Um, so I'll do token association. So that requires a, um, a, a token associate transaction, right? And... Let's see that over here somewhere. Yep. Hang on. So we just hit enter. And then we execute the token associate transaction, which is this one over here. Sign, execute, get receipt as usual. Enter. All right, now we're finally ready to do a token transfer. So for this one, we have a transfer transaction by the SDK, um, and you'll notice that is it's pretty simple, right? Token ID, the from account, negative number, token ID, uh, recipient account, positive number, and so long as the numbers tally, that, that works out, right? Um, and then we'll do a token transfer, and then we'll submit, sign and submit the transaction. All right, and then we've got this Hashcan URL, which shows us the transaction. And we can see, right, here's the transfer, right? So the token transfer transferred 100 units with two decimal places, so 1.00 of this token from one account of mine to another account of mine. And that's it, right? Pretty simple, right? Now, one of the things uh, that I would like, you know, uh, first-time learners um, or users of Hedera, developers on Hedera to, to see is how quickly they were able to learn how to do um, or, or complete the tutorial. Right. So if you're in DevRel, you'll, you'll have heard of something called time to hello world. So we can actually track that. Right. So 
time uh, to first task completion, and we've only done one, so it's uh, just under eight minutes. So within eight minutes, we were able to initialize the .end file, do the faucet, everything, and complete the first tutorial, which is to the HTS token. So that's pretty good. Um, it, uh, if, if we didn't have all the scripts running in the background, I'd estimate that this would have taken close to 45, 50 minutes, because that's what it took me the first time to do it. Um, but, you know, you're the benefit, uh, you're benefiting from like a much more simplified developer experience, and I hope that you enjoy it. Now, as promised, there are three, uh, sub tutorials. I have just shown you how to do Hedera token service, um, which is, um, the Hedera native way to do tokens, no solidity involved. It's just, uh, Hedera as a network understands what these type, this type of token is intrinsically. No, uh, no virtual machine or anything, no customizer, no customization, um, in user land. The customization is per the API of Hedera itself. Now, the way that you may be more familiar with is this other approach, which is under the subfolder called token HSCS. Right. So let's open up that script. Now here, take a look at the dependencies that have been imported. Right. So you'll see these lines right at the top. So just just uh, for orientation, um, in the left hand side menu, you've got token HSCS. Right. You open that and then open up script token HSCS.js. And inside of that, at the top, you'll see import from VM. So if you use Ethers.js, Web3.js, or VM. These are all um, client-side libraries that help you to construct JSON RPC requests that in, uh, and also sign using wallets and interact with EVM networks. And you can use those exact same libraries on Hedera as well, right? Because we have Hedera Smart Contract Service, which is EVM compatible, as I mentioned earlier on in the presentation. All right, so let's run the script. So currently, we're inside the token HTS um, folder so inside the terminal click inside of it and then do cd dot dot to go one level up and then cd token um, dash hscs and then you'll go into the same folder that the script is within and then you just have to type dot slash token and then you can either hit tab to auto complete oh sorry sorry my mistake dot slash script and then hit tab to autocomplete or you can type it out in full script token hses.js and then hit enter to run it now this script um teaches again how uh like teaches you how uh, about itself right what it's doing so every time you see one of these lines in purple just uh hold down command and click on the file url and that will jump you to the part that's about to execute so you can see it ahead of time so um the first part here is to saying i'm going to read a dot sol file over here right? So this is a smart contract that I've written. It's an ERC20 smart contract. It's a very minimal implementation. Um, we're not going to go into that today, right? Just, just assume that it's a standard implementation, right? Now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'll hit enter. Right now, the next, this next step is going to fail, right? And I'm doing this intentionally, right? It's going to load up the EVM bytecode and it's going to look for .abi and .bin files, which do not exist. So check this out. Um, when I run it, right, it'll try to read those files and then, okay, here's an error, right? So it's going to say no such file or directory, so it crashes. Now, so this may happen um, if, you know, you've made some error in typing a script, etc. So uh, th this is this is just like sort of a demo to, uh, you know, show you how to rectify it. So in this case, the solution is to type... Um, to, to run it, the compiler, right? And I've got an npm run script that just does this automatically. So you just need to type npm run um, compile smart contract like that. And I've got a typo. So compile smart contract and then hit enter. And that just runs SolC, the Solidity compiler, the same one that you would use on Ethereum or any other EVM uh, chain. Um, and then it does the .abi and, sorry, the abi and bin files, uh, flags. And so now what you'll see is, um, you'll also see my token.abi, which is human readable JSON file. And you'll also see a .bin file, which is not human readable. This, these are EVM, uh, bytecode. This is EVM bytecode, essentially. This is your compiled output of your smart contract. 
and this readable one that's your interface it tells um, it, it tells uh, client applications when I want to interact with this smart contract what are the functions and other things that I can use on the smart contract right um, an interface essentially so now that I have met the requirements let's run the script again so I'm going to do dot slash script token hscs.js hit enter again and this time I'm ex not expecting that same error right so it's going to read the solidity uh, source code and jump to here now it's going to read the dot sol uh, sorry the dot bin and dot abi files and this time it does an error so you can see okay here's the uh, here's the evm bytecode and here's the abi summary so all good we've got past that error that we had earlier on now it's going to check whether the json rpc endpoint is running excellent it is running in the background so this one over here now if you got an error here then um, that means there's some error within your .n file and we can get around to that later on if if uh, if someone is stuck there now submit evm transaction over rpc to deploy the bytecode now this one will actually say, take some time so oh sorry one question yep. i think i am stuck at the loading evm i got a github or no it says error id i think i have to submit Okay, so <laughs> Michael sort you out. Um, okay, so I have run this transaction over here, this deploy smart contract function, right? Um, and you'll notice that this this thing here is actually from the VM library, right? It's a standard uh, JSON RPC client library that you can use in uh, in any um, EVMD app, right? So you're calling uh, deploy contract. You're passing in the ABI file. You're also passing in the bytecode, and you're passing in constructor arguments. So this is the Solidity constructor, which I've copied in the comment over here, and you're simply passing in the value of the uh, the symbol of the ERC20 token and also the name, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then at the end of it, it does some output. Um, the output that we care about is this one over here. So open up. Hold down command uh, and open up the testnet contract slash address and then press the open button in the dialog and that will take you to a page that looks like this right so this is your evm smart contract that has been deployed onto hedera smart contract service and what you'll see here if you scroll down is you'll just see contract bytecode right so this is the bytecode um, that has been deployed it is um, almost identical, although not exactly identical, to the bytecode that you have compiled over here, right? Um, now, this is not particularly useful, right? Because what does this mean, right? Um, if someone visiting your smart contract on Etherscan or on Hashcan will not know what to do with this. So the next step is to verify a smart contract. So Hashcan supports Sourceify, which is an open source um, smart contract verification API. And so this utility function, which I provided, will just go ahead and verify it for you by passing in this metadata JSON file, um, which is a compiler output. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So now it says verify smart contract and the verification status was perfect, which means that it has worked. So now let's go back to the same tab. So this is the exact same smart contract and you can see it's only got the bytecode. Now I'm going to refresh this page. Right, and if you scroll back down to where we were before, you'll see contract bytecode. The bytecode is still there as it was before, but additionally, we've also got the full source code, thanks to the verification, and we have also got the ABI, also thanks to the verification. So now, now the smart contract um, is a bit more useful to other developers who want to interact with this particular smart contract. Now. The next step is to do a transfer. So previously with the HTS token, we did a transfer, or I should say we did an associate and transfer. Now we're just going straight to transfer because in EVM ERC20 tokens, they do not need the concept or do not have the concept of association. So we go straight to transfer and this is what it looks like, right? So write contract from VM and this is the deployed address of the smart contract, pass in the ABI, select the function, which is transfer and the function arguments, which are the two address, and the amount and it's coming from the specific account now let's go ahead and run that transaction we'll submit that to Hedera smart contract service and 
wait for that to complete. And so we get a hashcan URL and we can see over here, um, just command click and open it up in a new tab. And we'll see here that we have a transaction. But unlike the unlike the token the HTS token transaction, this time you'll see something called Ethereum transaction, right? So what happens is Hedera has a type of transaction called Ethereum transactions or any interaction with the EVM, that's what it's going to be called. And you can see here that under the transfer section, you will see there are, there's HBAR, you know, for the transaction fee, but you'll not see a token transfer necessarily, right? But what you'll see instead is a contract result section. So you can see over here that the result is a success and you'll see, okay, a transfer method has been called. Here are the input parameters. Here's the output, which is true and so on, right? So pretty similar to what you see in Hashcan. Now, when you see the call trace below, you'll see a call and then underneath it, you will see, you know, that this is where you see the actual transfer amounts, right? Um, and then you can also see the events, right? Um, th these are your event logs that are programmed into your ERC20 smart contract. So you can see that there's been a transfer event that has been, that has been emitted. So exactly the same as what you'd see in, uh, in Ethereum or Etherscan when you do an ERC20 smart contract transfer. Um, cool. Okay. So now the, the next step is, uh, we've already done a write transaction, um, to the smart contract where we, um, essentially change the state of the smart contract. You can also do a read transaction, right? So this uses VM's read contract. So this makes a JSON RPC request without making a transfer, right? Uh, without making a transaction, I should say. So what we're calling is this particular smart contract function, the balance of uh, ERC20 function. And we're passing in the smart, the tokens address, the ABI, as well as the name of the function selector, balance of, and we're passing in this EVM address as an argument. All right, let's run that. This one should be pretty much instant, and we get a result of 100. The N here is just JavaScript notation for big integer because UN256 is bigger than 2 to the power 53, so we need to use big in, right? Okay, so um, we finished our token HSCS task. So now we've got ERC20 tokens. We've deployed them and transferred them and also query the balance. And so what we've just demonstrated is that we're able to do Hedera native tokens and we're able to do EVM uh, style tokens, ERC20 tokens, both on the same network, right? And we're using the Hedera SDK for the former and the uh, and we're using VM, which is a JSON RPC or EVM uh, library for the latter. Now, the, these two are, I would consider to be beginner or easy uh, ways to interact with token. The next thing I'm going to demonstrate is slightly more complicated, right? It is a, it's interoperability and it's a demonstration of how HTS tokens can be interacted with without using the Hedera SDK, but instead you interact with them using the, um, oop, better delay that. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so we, we would like to now interact with the HTS token, but we're not going to use the Hedera SDK, but instead using EVM tools. So the way that this works behind the scenes is that we have a system contract, which is kind of similar to a pre-compile, if you're familiar with that in EVM. Um, and that allows you to use um, an EVM ABI to interact with a native service such as Hedera token service. Now... This is slightly more complex, slightly more advanced, um, but you know, let's, let's try it out. So one thing I should mention before moving on is that when we compile, we've got these artifacts over here. So we've got the ABI and .bin files. And then also previously in token HTS, what I've done as well, and I didn't mention this earlier on, is that we've got an artifacts.json file that we output to, to disk. And that has the, you know, the token ID and its EVM address, et cetera, right? So, if you've already done both token HSCS and token HTS, you can proceed to token interop, which is this folder over here, token interop. Let's open up this file. So what you'll notice here is that I'm going to be interacting with an HTS token, a Hedera uh, native token, but I am not going to use um, the Hedera SDK. You'll notice that I'm using VM instead, right? So challenge accepted. <laughs> All right, cd dot dot, 
right to get you to the root folder and cd into um where was this token dash interop and then hit enter so now we're in the same directory token interop as the script over here let's run the file by typing dot slash script and hit tab to auto complete or type it out in full script token interop.js and then run enter now um, before we start the script it's reminding you that you have to first complete both token hcs hts and token hscs tasks before uh, before proceeding so we've already done that so all good let's hit enter now um, the first thing that it's going to do is obtain the evm address of the existing hts token that you've already um, deployed so this artifacts.json file um, which records that previous activity will just simply um, give that answer so we'll proceed now it's going to load the abi which is what it needs and so then it's got the abi so this is your erc20 abi that's loaded up then it'll check that the json rpc endpoint is running so hit enter again and it's it's running and then we'll submit the evm transaction over rpc to transfer hts token balances via hscs so this is the this is the tricky bit right so you'll notice here that i am i've got this uh token evm address but this is actually a an hts token evm address that is being interacted with not a smart contract so the two address is an hts token not a smart contract but we're calling it with the abi of an erc20 token so that's the that's the part that is tricky now, what I'll do over here is I'll go to hips.hedera.com and I believe it is number 218, right? So if you'd like to read up more about how this works behind the scenes, this is like some pretty uh, tricky engineering going on behind the scenes, but there's a proxy redirect facade, if I remember the name of the design pattern correctly, that enables you to use um, an ERC20 ABI to talk to an HTS token. So um yeah just search for hip 218 and that will give you all the full details on how this actually works right now let's go back to the you can do that in your own time um let's go back to the demo right so now we're about to do um interact with the hts tokens address as if it was a smart contract even though it's not now let's hit enter and see whether it works So this, this might take a couple of seconds. There we go. So now that transfer has succeeded, as we can see here. Now let's open that up and see exactly how it looks different. Now we go to Hashcan, we see a transaction, right? And we'll notice here that there's HBAR transfers, but even though the HTS token was transferred, you do not see token transfers, which is what you expect to see. Instead, what you'll see is a contract result that looks exactly the same as the H scs transfer of the erc20 token even though this is not that and then what is different is that you'll see a call trace right now call trace shows you um your original transaction and any sub transactions or ch child transactions underneath of it so if one smart contract calls another smart contract that will show up here right and that's exactly what has happened right you'll see that our original call right was to the address of the hts token and then hip 218s you know proxy redirect facade gets um gets activated and then what happens is the that results in a delegate call which goes from the uh from the hts token address to the hedera token service system contract which i mentioned earlier on right and inside of this this is where you can see the redirect um, function being called this is where the hts token transfer actually occurs so as a result of that you'll see an erc20 transfer event um you know as 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 you expect but additionally if you go right to the top you'll also see tr child transactions and you'll see underneath of it there's one child transaction which corresponds to that delegate call that i showed earlier on and here you will actually see the token transfer so this is where you see the HTS token transfer being transferred from one account to another. So slightly more complex, but you know, um, as far as you're concerned, as an EVM developer, you can interact with an HTS token as if it was actually an EVM 
ERC20 token. So that's where the magic occurs. Now, submit EVM request over RPC to query token balance. So this one is a bit more straightforward. So you're doing a read contract. Same thing is also going to use that same proxy redirect facade facility and the system contract and just translate that value for you. Now, because we've transferred twice, um, once it, during the HTS uh, token, we transferred it once um, during the token HTS um, one over here. And now we're transferring it again. So the balance um, is 100 from before and now another additional 100. So it's 200. So we've got 200 units of the token. All right, now let's take a look at this. So we can see how long we took in total. So um, our time to hello world was just under eight minutes and our time to complete all three tasks, including all the explanations, was just under 30 minutes. And each of the individual tasks actually didn't take us that long, right? So it's three minutes for the first one, um, 10 minutes for the second one, and four minutes, or I should say just under five minutes for the last one. So yeah, you can be productive pretty quickly um, on, on Hedera. So I've just come to the end of the demo. Um, thank you everyone for following along and um, just show of hands who actually got through till the end. Amazing, everyone did. Okay, <laughs> so it was worth it to repeat the uh, <laughs> repeat the the setup phase a couple of times. Yeah, and and thank you very much to Mike and Freddie for for assisting everyone getting running. Okay, um, one one more thing I should mention over here is that um, I, I I did say that we're not going to demonstrate um, HCS, but that was kind of a, uh, a, a, a misdirect, if you will. HS, HCS has been running in the background. It just wasn't part of the tutorial. But all of these metrics have been logged anonymously right onto HCS, which is a message queue. So if you click on in, in the summary thing at the bottom, if you see view HCS metrics on Hashcan, you click on that and you press open, right? you'll go to a, a HCS topic and what you can see over here is you can check out your anonymized key, which is just this random hexadecimal string. And you can check it out and find all instances of it here. And that will get you your time stamped of when you completed each task, right? Um, so this, this is a way for you to know, right? Um, like how this happens in the background. And like you can prove actually uh, that you've completed this tutorial um, if, if you wanted to, because this is written to the blockchain. So, and all you need for the proof is to know this uh, specific ID. Yeah, awesome. So um, that's it. That's the end of the demonstration. That's the end of the presentation. Um, I will leave it there. Um, I will, yeah, I'll just put this up on screen for the QR code if you want to check the additional resources. Do we have any questions from anyone? Yeah. So, what's like the minimum security requirement for you to do? Oh, it, it depends on which hard fork you're targeting. So, um, I generally not not for Hedera targeting reasons, but for security vulnerability reasons, I recommend um, sticking to the one that I've used. So, I've actually used the minimum version over here. So, if you take a look at package.json. Um, see salt see yep so that's the lowest version that I recommend that you use because prior versions to that they have certain security vulnerabilities that you know you want to avoid anyway yeah so yeah and, and the flip side of that's what's the highest version you can use and that's based on what hard fork Hedera supports at the moment so it does support um, Denkun so any Solidity compiler that is not later than Dankun will uh, will be supported. Now, post Dankun, there is going to be another hard fork. Um, and whenever that lands, um, give us some time, and then we'll catch up. Right? It's it's like it'll it'll, it'll lag at most by minus by zero or minus one. You know, hard fork. That's usually what we do. Pretty pretty quick about that. Um, and the concept of account IDs. Yeah. Uh, um, is that related to the history of some sort, or is it a... Right. Um, okay, so I should mention that Hedera is EVM compatible, but it actually is a superset of the EVM. So you can use ECDSA 
um, SECP 256 K1 private keys, which is the same as Ethereum and Bitcoin, etc. But you can also use ED25519 EDDSA keys as well, right? Um, and that's, uh, you can use both key types. So like I said, it's a superset. And when you create an account and interact with it for the first time, um, you do not necessarily need an EVM address to do that, right? When you use the private key for the first time, you get assigned an account ID, which is of the format 0.0. some increment by one number each time. Yeah, and same with token IDs and, and everything. It's a global numeric space. So each time a new entity is created, such as an account, a token, or a smart contract, etc., it gets this new ID in that 0.0. .0 incremental number format, right? Yeah. So that's what it is. Now, EVM addresses, how do they play into this? Um, I will not go into, there's, there's an entire hip about this and how you convert it, etc. But essentially think about it as an EVM address being an alias for this, this, this account ID. And the reason that that's necessary is because of the superset thing that both are necessary at the same time if you want to do EVM stuff and also be compatible with the Hedera base layer. So, so ERC20s in I would not use the term wrapped because that has a different meaning, um, like wrapped tokens. Um, but what I would say is alias is the proper term. So um, let me see if I can yeah, find a demo of that. Yeah. But it's the same on Hedera uh, if you do an alias to name it. Uh, but you can also do a HTS token, and that HTS token will have an alias, which is the EVM address, yeah. that you can use within uh, the EVM ecosystem. Exactly. So if you see this over here, right, so this is an HTS token. It has a token ID, which is your Hedera native ID, right, 0, .0, 0 dot incremental number. Um, but it also has an EVM address, which is an alias for it. And this EVM address, if you actually do the hexadecimal conversion, basically is this translated into this in hexadecimal, right? Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. So... You can, you can Actually, deploy a ERC20 token. That token is association in there. You just deploy it as any smart contract, and it will work. But uh, you will not be deploying an HTS token, which has uh, other capabilities. You know, which it could be faster, cheaper. Uh, most of the AI ecosystem is using HTS token, so you have better integration with the ecosystem as well. Yeah. So, and and just to build on what Freddie just mentioned, I've got it on the screen right now. So. Um, with the HTS token, right, you've got your account, or I should say your token ID, your entity ID um, generated automatically, and then your EVM address is the alias. Um, and this is a, uh, I believe this is the smart contract, the ERC20 smart contract. And you can see over here, it was EVM address first. So that's why you don't get an address that starts with a whole bunch of zeros, right? You get the EVM ad assigned address, and then the uh, the entity ID, in this case, the contract ID is assigned after the fact, right? So effectively, in both cases, there are just aliases of each other. So, so all HTS token transfers, are they Ethereum-based transactions? No. No, no, but you can, and, and that's what I demonstrated in the last more advanced one, you can use ERC-20 ABIs to interact with it, and that uses the uh, proxy redirect facade uh, oh, pattern, okay. yeah, and and if you want to read about that in more detail, this is the hit for it. Yeah, imagine that the Edera contract smart service is the EVM, is a service on top of Edera network, uh, but you also have Edera inside the EVM, so that's why you can access the HTS, which is another service on Edera, so you have Edera as a platform, and then you have many services, and one of those services is the, is the HTS token, uh, the other is the smart contract, but on the smart contract you can get to access all of the other services through uh, system contract. And that's, you know, like the engineering part that is a little bit complicated, but it makes you transparent so you can use the HTS token as if they were a coin. Yeah, so for example, if, even if you're not a developer, you could use MetaMask and then supply the EVM address of your HTS token and you can interact with that token pretending as if it was actually an ERC20 sm uh, smart contract based token. So, so you assign that under ETDSA? Yes, yeah. yes. And then 
then so that's the signing account. The, so if the account um, owns the certain units of this of of this particular token and it interacts with that uh, thing, then that then it'll, then it'll work. Um, but you also said you have another... Yeah. So if if you were to use ED DSA yeah. uh, ED two five five one nine um, private key, then MetaMask wouldn't understand that. Yeah. Yes. But the average MetaMask user would have an EC DSA key and wouldn't have an ED DSA key, right? So that's not really a big of a concern. It's like sort of an edge case. So you use like Phantom and other. Not sure about that. Oh, yeah, not not familiar with Phantom. Possibly, yeah. If it uses the same private key format, then it could work. Yeah. Yeah, in, in theory. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Uh, I also have my head wrap around that a uh, little bit when I was new to Edera. Uh, in the same thing, in Ethereum, you don't have accounts. You just have addresses. Uh, that's it, right? Uh, that are derived from the private key. You just create uh, an address. But in Edera, everything has an account, you know, like uh, an entity. So to speak. Yeah. Uh, and when you create your account, you decide what signing key you want to use. If you want to use a ED25 or 225, I don't know, ED, I just call it ED. 25519, yeah. Use uh, ETDSA. Yeah. Um, just, just what, what's the purpose of differentiating those? Like, is it because of latency and you guys are trying to. Um, I, I don't it's, think it's it. Tokens, yeah. It's, it's, way faster. If you are going to do like a 10 KCPS of tokens in HPS tokens, it is faster to use HPS to use uh, rather than use uh, yes, the twenty. Now yeah, the think about direct execution with logic that is programmed into the nodes versus indirect execution via an, a virtual machine, EVM. right? Yeah. So the virtual machine is obviously going to be much slower than direct path execution. And now for the signing key, uh, I think that it was a legacy decision to use TV because it's a better uh, algorithm. I think it's a, I'm not familiar with the specifics of why it's a better algorithm, but uh, I think it's more secure and yeah. it's uh, faster to process as well the, you know, like a verification of the signature. Well, it, it's kind of uh, coming full circle, isn't it? Like Ethereum is now considering moving to, uh, yeah, to to other forms of keys. They're also considering BLS, but they haven't made up their minds yet. Okay. Yeah. So, um, ECDSA is not the be all and end all. It's just um, everyone was using it because they were um, just copying Bitcoin essentially. So Ethereum did it because they wanted to have Bitcoin compatible keys in their wallets. Um, there's no other reason, but um, let's just say uh, Lehman is uh, very, very deep into physics and cryptography. So, like, he's very mathematical. So, when he picks the keys, he has like he had a very, very sound reason that is probably beyond all of us here put together. <laughs> he's a really smart guy. Yeah. yeah, but but we're we've added since then ECDSA um, compatibility because we want EVM compatibility. Yeah. So, so interestingly, Hedera ha has had from the beginning the capability to support multiple um, private key formats, whereas Ethereum doesn't. It's sort of hard coded that it only has one, and so that that's why it's a bit of a struggle for them to add additional ones. You know, like the comp the the process to add a new one is much more complex, whereas for Hedera. Um, Freddie, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, it is as simple as modifying the protocol buffer and and you know the the corresponding code that parses it, right? Yeah, because we have that built in. It's not hard coded. Yeah. In fact, we have. I think if I I looked at the code before, we have five signature schemes, and then three of them are commented out. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if if you are if you are starting out for the first time, you can't go wrong with MetaMask. So I'd recommend that if you come from an EVM background. Uh, 
And if you want to go further and like into Hedera native stuff, then Hashpack is a good option. Blade is another good Blade. option. Kabila is another good option. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but if you already have experience with uh, EDA and you have uh, MetaMask, you can use just the same MetaMask. You just uh, add another RPC provider and you use uh, Ibera. Yeah. You use a Hashio for the RPC provider. You have testnet and mainnet on Hashio, so you don't need to run your own relay as we did today. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it, it should be transparent if you use uh, MetaMask. It should be just like any other EVM case. So if you want to use uh, more of the specific ecosystem, maybe hash bar, uh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Do you have any questions? Uh, so you raise your hand just now. So yep. So regarding the wallet itself, are you fully medium compatible? So can you still use something like MetaMask? Yes, you can definitely use MetaMask. Was that R-A-B-B-Y? That's EVM compatible, yeah? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I haven't used that before, but if it's EVM compatible, it should work. Cool. And also regarding the, you know, the token contract, when you said that we can just directly send tokens to someone's address. Okay, so HSCS, so ERC20 tokens, you can just send it to anyone. Whereas HTS tokens, um, you know, there is, there is a process called token association, which is effectively um, allowing uh you to receive a certain uh, a certain token so like essentially whitelisting because this is actually an ongoing problem in ethereum or evm compatible chains i should say where you know people just randomly airdrop you random tokens but then those tokens are erc20 compatible but sometimes they contain malicious code so if you try to delete it or transfer it or whatever you know then that executes whatever code is in there and you can drain your wallet so this is a ongoing like security issue with uh with evm and there's no way to opt out of it at the moment so hedera has preempted that so with hts tokens it says you have to say i want to associate with this token and then once you've given it permission then it says okay um i'll accept this token uh, what about the native token transfer? that i'm referring to the native token transfer so that's hts tokens are the native tokens right no, no, but uh, native he might be talking about as well Oh, yeah. oh, okay. So HBAR, no. HBAR is cryptocurrency you can transfer without any association. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's just for the HTS uh, that you need association, which is the token service. Yeah. Any, any more? Uh, yeah, that's Yes. Okay. So, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that. I was going to say that anyway. So, um, at ETH Global, I'm going to cut all of this down into 20 minutes. I will probably only be able to demonstrate one of the three, at most two of the three that are inside of here, right? And I won't give the presentation at the beginning. So consider yourselves um, having a leg up on the competition and definitely try to uh, build on Hedera during the hackathon. Yeah. If you happen to attend, I also be there supporting. Yeah, so yes. Okay. As well, Mike. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any questions? Oh, good. Any more questions? Do you guys have bridges for the chain? Yeah, there is one, a uh, hash for. Hash for. Hash for. Yeah. Hash for. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is Axelar at the, at the hackathon? Are they sponsoring? Okay. I know that, I know that they are. Oh, if they are, that might be an interesting, uh, project idea. Cool. Okay. Um, but before I wrap up, just some housekeeping, right? So Gitpod has a free instance, but it, but it still like has a limit on how long you can run it, like number of hours or something. So if you still have it open, um, click on this like triple ham, like hamburger icon or triple line icon and press stop workspace in the menu just so that it doesn't use up your free hours unnecessarily. Um, if you don't, then it's fine as well. Um, <laughs> you know, just less free hours. You can remove them after. Yeah, you can. If you just go to gitpod.io manually, you can manually stop them as well, like uh, like this, if you want to. Oh. Yeah. yeah those are creating your workspace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I get rid of them once I'm once I'm done with it. Okay, so that's it. Thank you everyone for for attending this workshop and following through all the way till the end.
And thank you for all the great questions as well. Yeah, thank you for your time. Cheers. No